None of these criticisms phased Einstein. He still played his violin. He still sailed and stubbornly pursued his lofty vision. It was only news from Europe which would pull Einstein from his work. Requests from refugees for sponsorship to emigrate to America poured in. He wrote so many affidavits he began to fear they had lost their value. Elsa remarked that though her husband seemed invulnerable, he was actually much more vulnerable than any other man she knew. with an act of humanity, with the maintaining of cultural values, and not least with a measure of considerable political importance. The effect upon all nations, and not least upon the Germans, of the fate of these innocent people, so mal maliciously persecuted, must not be underestimated. To leave these victims to their misery would be a heavy blow to all those who believe in human solidarity and would encourage those who believe only in force and oppression and who act accordingly. When the Nazis came into power, uh, Einstein, I think, was faced with a dilemma. Uh, should he continue with his pacifism, or uh, should he uh, do what he could to resist uh, the Nazis in their effort to get uh, control of the whole world? He said that he would be willing to subscribe to the idea to resist force with force. Because he said, otherwise it's like trying to cure a, a sick tribe of people. You try to cure them in a way that is too slow that by the time you cure them by a pacifist way, they're all dead. That's not very efficient. Einstein wrote a close friend, due to the wretched traditions of the Germans who are such a badly messed up people. It will be very difficult to remedy the situation by sensible, not to speak of humane means. I keep hoping that at the end of the war, with God's benevolent help, they will largely kill each other off. Many absolute pacifists felt betrayed by Einstein's militant pacifism. Hitler forced his hand. In 1939, news came to Einstein that German physicists had succeeded in producing nuclear fission. The uranium atom could now be split. Germany might be able to develop a bomb. We were very worried that the Germans will develop atomic weapons. We wanted, therefore, to interest the United States to develop nuclear weapons so that Hitler should not be the only one to possess them. And it was a friend of mine, Dr. Szilard, who had the idea that Einstein should write a letter to Roosevelt, and maybe that will have some effect. He did not know at, uh, about the fission process, which was, of course, the basis of the difficulty. But he understood it in 15 minutes, and he dictated a letter. It was taken to Roosevelt, and Roosevelt appointed the Bureau of Standards 
to look into the question of nuclear weapons and see whether they are possible and what effect they may have. Sir, some recent work by E. Fermi and L. Silar leads me to expect that the element uranium may be turned into a new and important source of energy in the immediate future. It is conceivable that extremely powerful bombs of a new type may thus be constructed. In view of this situation, you might think it desirable to put forward a recommendation for government action. The government gathered the top American and European exile scientists to work on the Manhattan Project, headed by Robert Oppenheimer. Science and government were at the beginning of a new and ambitious partnership. Einstein was not called to participate. He remained in Princeton. The work at Los Alamos was considered too confidential to be entrusted to Einstein. He was considered a security risk. But, but we did not want it to be exploded over a Japanese city, but over open territory to show it to the Japanese scientists that the research thing terrible and Japan should come to a, re a, a good peace with the United States. Well, if we tried to persuade the people, the government, but we did not succeed. On March 25th, 1945, Einstein sent a second letter to President Roosevelt, warning of the catastrophic consequences that would result if the atom bomb were ever actually used. FDR died a few days later. The letter lay unopened on his desk. Behan, what was your most outstanding experience on this historic flight? I suppose it was when the clouds opened up over the target at Nagasaki. The target was there pretty as a picture. I made the run, let the bomb go. That was my greatest thrill. Einstein told close friend when they heard the news. I could burn my fingers that I wrote that first letter to Roosevelt. The ancient Chinese were right. It is impossible to know the results of your actions. This, in, in this photograph, it's in front of 112 Mercer Street in uh, Princeton, which was an old white house, which was just absolutely beautiful. It, it's a real, I, I don't know what's happened to it today. I hope that somebody would preserve that as a shrine. But although in his will, it states that that shouldn't happen. Well, houses have spirits. I mean, there was something about that house that old American shingle house with the low, low ceilings and everything a little bit lopsided. And had all great big German furniture. And there was a simplicity, a stillness in that house, a sweetness. But it was created so much by the women of the house to me. 